Hello. So I thought I'd just give you a quick run through of the last track I've made called Don Les Arbres. It's on Bandcamp if you fancy buying it or if you just want to go and have a quick listen. Um, I just thought it might give you a few ideas. Uh, if nothing else, it might make you think what you definitely don't want to do in your next piece of music. Um, but we've got drums being made with a pulsar. So I'll just bring those up. Really simple pattern. Um, this time I've sequenced the pulsar with the eloquencer. Um, or actually the snare and the hi hats with the with the eloquencer. The kick drum I've used Euclidean circles because I just really like the patterns that that creates. And you can also um, just a flick of the switch or twist of the knob you can um, change the pattern quite quickly I got it on the wrong one wondered why it wasn't doing anything so if I just want to add a few more kicks really quickly just turn the knob I want to change the rhythm back to slow again um, like I said snare and hi-hats just sequenced on the eloquencer and then I've just been jamming away on the pulsar through the track I mean the track I've got on Bandcamp is basically a jam that's what I generally like doing um, so it's pretty long but again that's what I enjoy um, there's not that much going on in the pulsar I've just been tweaking it all manually I haven't really got any modulation going on using the delay and switching to the reverb every now and again changing the lengths of each note on the hi-hat uh, and the snare kick stays the same tonally pretty much um, it ended up being quite a clicky kick I didn't quite realize how clicky it was when I was recording it I probably wouldn't have it quite as clicky next time because um, I was going for a more chilled vibe but anyway, sometimes you record it and you just think, well, that's what happened. That's how it's going to stay, <laughs> especially with the jam. There's not that much you can do about it. Um, as far as the bass line goes, let's turn this these drums off a second. There's your bass line. Again, sequence from the eloquencer. And we were using the Roland 512 VCO just one waveform. I've got that going into the Morgasmatron which is a dual filter. I've got it on the low pass setting and that's coming straight out straight into channel one on the WMD performance mixer. So nothing that interesting going on with that. Did I have any? Um, I've got a bit of modulation. Where's that coming from? Let's follow that back. That is coming from the voltage block. I've just got that on the resonance just to give it um, a bit of variation, a bit of interest. So there's your bass line. Uh, I've got the envelope, the frequency central envelope. Um, that was probably changing a little bit here and there. If I change the filter on the Morgasmatron, you can hear what it does to the sound so I'd have tweaked that a little bit to give variation throughout the track from a more subby sound to a more raw sound and you can play with the envelope just to shorten it And it's all those little tweaks that can just make your pretty basic track just sound a little bit more interesting to the listener. Um, other sound we've got is the Akemi's Taiko. I love this module. I'll never get rid of it. I've had it right from the start. You can get so many different sounds out of it. And I just had it in the background, really. Uh, I had... Um, lots of modulation, 
coming from the voltage block and now and again I'd sort of open up the release shorten the release wasn't doing much really because the modulation was doing it all for me um, and I also you made use of the panning input on the WMD performance mixer so um, what did I have was that an LFO yeah an LFO coming from Batumi just to pan it from left to right again just to create a bit of a more interesting mix um, and make it a little bit more interesting um, for the listener um, what else have we got oh yeah I just had one sort of snary clap hit coming from the WMD fracture had that pretty low in the mix didn't do much with that I might have cranked the reverb up at one point I really like the reverb on the fracture and again it's all very hands-on you can just get to it quickly could have changed the decay short and long and then the other sound that was probably um, the most involved sound I did was coming from rings initially probably just a basic sequence on the eloquencer let's just double check that yeah um, I probably used the um, probability quite a bit I did I know I remember now um, so that you've got certain notes coming in not all the time now and again they'll come in um, I would have had probability on the pitch as well to make the um, the melody change because it's only a, a short step sequence that you create with the eloquence so unless you want to start doing different patterns and stuff which I can never be bothered to do um, so probability can give you a nice um, always changing sequence and a bit of modulation as well on rings now what I did with rings is I ran it into the Instruo Arbor and recorded it in and then I sent that out to the Morphogene so what that means is I could then record a sample from the Arbor into the Morphogene and then I would just have the wet just a little bit up actually what you can see now is all Morphogene if I bring this back that's just the Arbor so that was rings recorded into our bar if I go all the way to the right on the dry wet knob of the morphogene that's the sample of the R bar and I've then slowed it right down and reversed it and that's just to create a texture or a little paddy sound in the background so then I can have a mix of those two different sounds which I love doing this sort of thing so I think I had it about there for the majority of the track so I've basically got a bit more Arbor than Morphogene so that bit of Morphogene is like I said acting as a bit of a textural sound in the background and then I think towards the end of the track I probably cranked it all the way so it was just Morphogene so it's almost like a transition in the track just to create a nice change get you away from the same repetitive sequences that you can often get with modular so that's one way to get a nice change um, and that whole patch was then going into make noise uh, mimeophone and the mimeophone again has got that dry wet or mix knob so this is with the mimeophone coming in hopefully you can hear that and you can have all mimeophone or you can have a bit of both or you can take it out altogether another way to create nice varying textures I think that's about it really uh, as far as 
doing my jam, I, d I tend to just bring everything down at the start, slowly start to introduce different elements. I uh, can't remember quite what I started with, you know, could be just, you know, generally it might be just a bit of drums, maybe not the kick straight away, maybe a filtered kick. Um, or I might start with a textural sound, like a paddy sound, like maybe you could, I mean, you can you can approach it however you feel like. Maybe just a bit of R bar first, then maybe start bringing in a little bit of the percussion sounds. You know, so you're building an arrangement on the fly, improvising it, and the more you play around with it, the more you'll just uh, work out what you want to hear. Um, had the same old setup that I've mentioned before on the Sens with the Dreadbox Echo and the sound hack herb verb make noise herb verb. Um, I think that's about it. Lots of mob modulation in the Taiko, like I said. I think that's pretty much it covered. Oh, what have we got going into clouds? Do we have a bit of clouds as well? Let's just see what we had going in to the Oh, I don't know, all the leads are a mess now. But yeah, clouds probably on... Um, hmm, I want to find that now. Let's find it. Let's trace it back. I'm being lazy. Let's go back. Ah, I forgot I'd even done that. Ah, that's what I had. I had the fracture. So that snare clap sound. I was using the really cool filter... It's a bit like a DJ style filter on the Endorphins Black Noir and then going into clouds. So um, I'm sure you'll know by now what clouds does. Texture synthesizer, it's like a granular synth. Um, great effects unit amongst other things. Um, and that's pretty much it. All right, guys, so I hope that's helped. If you've got any questions, fire away. Um, any any input on how to improve things, always up for that. Please like, comment, subscribe and share if it's been useful to you. And uh, happy music making. See you later.